We have a lot of penny cases dealing with the Illinois so-called assault weapon ban and related matters out there in that state. And I want to talk about them because it's very confusing which ones of those may get to the U.S. Supreme Court and which ones will never get to the Supreme Court. Let's talk about it when we get back. Hey folks, I'm Mark Smith, host of the Four Boxes Diner, proud American owner, constitutional attorney, member of the U.S. Supreme Court Bar, and New York Times bestselling author. If you haven't subscribed to the Four Boxes Diner Second Amendment channel, please do so. And please follow us on Twitter, where we're now developing a following of at Four Boxes Diner. Check us out there as well. Okay, folks, I want to talk about Illinois because there's a lot of different cases out there at different stages dealing with different types of defendants. And also, Illinois is the state where there's been a lot of hubbub about the state Supreme Court and two state Supreme Court justices that have just recently refused to recuse themselves from an appeal involving Governor J.B. Pritzker's signing of the assault weapon ban, even though J.D. J.B. Pritzker donated half a million dollars to two of the justices now on the Illinois Supreme Court. I don't want to dwell on that. I want to talk about the whole gestalt of those cases in Illinois and how it may play out and how I think it's going to play out. Because again, here at the Four Boxes Diner, we don't just talk about what's happened. We also try to tell you what I think is going to happen. All right. So to begin with, there's four types of cases right now dealing with the Illinois assault weapon ban or assault weapon type bans at local levels. Let me go through the four and then we're going to talk about how they all break down. To begin with, in the Federal Court of Appeals in Illinois, the seventh, that's the seventh circuit court of appeals, they have a case right now called Bevis versus City of Naperville, dealing with a City of Naperville ban on a so-called assault weapons. There was an attempt to get an injunction of that. The lower court refused to do so on an opinion that was a very weak tea, to say the least. I think I made a did a whole video seriously criticizing the rationale that was silly. Nevertheless, that's not the purpose of this video. The point is that the Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals is hearing that Bevis case right now. Now, that is going to be determined by a three-judge panel. We don't know who that panel is. This case has the potential to go to the United States Supreme Court because it's on a so-called assault weapon ban. The potential problem with this one particular case of, of Bevis is that it, uh, its procedural posture is that it's on a motion for a preliminary injunction. It's not necessarily going to be on a final judgment. Historically, the Supreme Court only likes to grant cert in cases where there's a final judgment in a case and they don't like to take cases that are sort of midway through being completed, what are sometimes referred to as interlocutory appeals, which means appeals from an aspect of the case while the case continues and there's not a final judgment. So the Bevis case right now is in that procedural posture where it's still going on. And the question is whether or not a preliminary injunction should be entered pending the rest of the case. And again, if it's denied... Uh, I could see the Supreme Court looking carefully at this case because I do think the court probably thinks a so-called assault weapon case is relatively easy to decide because it's clearly unconstitutional under their case law of in common use that semi-automatic firearms should be protected since they're already protected in the form of handguns. Thus, why would they not be protected in the form of long guns, which are responsible for far fewer deaths a year? Not that that's a consideration legally, but it's certainly the Supreme Court, you know, could take notice of that in the back of their minds. So that's Bevis versus City of Naperville. That in some ways is the furthest along in terms of being closest to the U.S. Supreme Court because that's in the Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals already, which is a one stop away from the United States Supreme Court. So we'll be watching that. There's three other genres of cases out there. And I say genres of cases because some of the things I'm talking about, there's actually multiple lawsuits pending consolidated together. So why I say there's a genre genre cases, what I mean is there's multiple cases together that are being in front of like one judge. So that's why I sometimes use the word cases, even though really we're looking at like a single case uh, or a single matter with a bunch of cases combined into a grouping. So the second one to look at though is Veramontes versus Cook County. Cook County, of course, is Chicago. This is in federal court, the United States District Court for the Northern District of Illinois. Uh, this is a firearms policy coalition case, I believe, and uh, it is moving toward a trial in front of Judge uh, Rebecca uh, Paul Mayer. 
And this is very interesting case because it deals with Chicago. If you may recall, the, the United States Supreme Court has familiarity with Chicago's silly gun control laws because it was the Chicago ban on handguns that gave rise to the Supreme Court's decision in 2010 in McDonald versus Chicago. So the interesting thing about Veramontes versus Cook County is it's coming out of a county in an area of Chicago that the Supreme Court is quite familiar with, and uh, that probably weighs in our fair. But again, that is still at the trial level. There will have to be a decision at some point on the merits. And the interesting thing about that is that deals with the Cook County assault weapon ban. That is going to be a trial on the merits, which means whatever that judge decides will be a final judgment. And as I just mentioned, interlocutory appeals are less attractive to the U.S. Supreme Court as a general matter than cases involving a final judgment. So once there's a final judgment in that Veramontes case, that will go to the Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals on a full record, and that could, again, be one step away from the Supreme Court as well. The third case... And this is where things get really interesting. There's a set of cases right now in front of Judge Stephen McGlynn, who is a Trump appointed to the federal bench. He's quite familiar with firearms. You can tell that from a transcript that I recently read. Uh, he's very sophisticated in terms of just understanding what guns are, which makes him somewhat unique in the federal court system. A lot of judges don't even know what a gun is, never mind the details of them. Uh, anyway, so Judge McGlynn is overseeing, I think, four or five pending cases that have been consolidated. One of those cases has been brought by the law firm that argued, uh, well, not by the law firm, but by the lawyers, I should say, that argued in One Nice Serpa versus Bruin. That's Paul Clement's firm. They have the lead case out there in Barnett versus Raul. And that is being argued right now on a preliminary injunction in front of Judge McGlynn. I, I strongly believe, based on everything I've seen out there and everything the judges said, that there will be a preliminary injunction entered preventing the state of Illinois from enforcing their assault weapon ban in any respect. And that, I think, is what Judge McGlynn is going to enter. That will be a very big deal because it in some ways makes these other cases dealing with the Illinois state assault weapon ban moot because if the whole law is, for, is, is basically prevented from being enforced because of that federal judge in the Southern District of Illinois, Stephen McGlynn, then it almost doesn't matter, for example, what the Illinois Supreme Court does because whatever they do, it doesn't matter. The law is not allowed to be enforced according to Stephen McGlynn, if that's what he orders uh, in a preliminary injunction order. Of course, if he were to enter that order, the state of Illinois could take an appeal to the Seventh Circuit Court of Appeal, which is the same court that's going to be here in the Bevis versus City of Naperville case. And that would be quite interesting to see what they do with that, because I have a feeling, given the familiarity with the Second Amendment and firearms and firearm law, uh, Judge McGlynn is probably going to write a very powerful 120-page type opinion that lays out in extreme detail why the Second Amendment is being violated by the state of Illinois in the assault weapon ban, and that will be very difficult for the Seventh Circuit to just willy-nilly blow off and uh, reverse, not to say it can't happen, but it will be a much, much more difficult process for the Seventh Circuit to do that with a Stephen McGlynn opinion in my, is my best guess. The last thing in some ways is the most controversial that's the Calkins versus Pritzker case. There's also a couple other cases that relate to this, but right now the case being decided is Calkins versus Pritzker. This is before the, the state Supreme Court of Illinois. Oral argument is coming up shortly. The reason why this is so controversial right now is because two of the Supreme Court justices on the state of Illinois Supreme Court uh, were just elected in a statewide election for judges and both received half a million dollar political donations from the governor, J.B. Pritzker, and some other prominent Democrats out there to win that election, there was a motion for these two justices, these two Supreme Court justices in Illinois to recuse. They both said no. Uh, the argument was that because there were these political donations made, they should not be allowed to sit on the case. They rejected that. Uh, so they're going to hear this case on state grounds. Now, this is probably not going to be a good vehicle to go to the United States Supreme Court, at least for the moment, because if you look at what's being argued before the Illinois State Supreme Court in Calkins, these are state-based, state of Illinois laws being argued over the state constitution. But here's the thing. Even if the Second Amendment community loses the Calkins appeal to the Illinois Supreme Court, it may not matter for Illinois gun owners if Stephen McGlynn in the Southern District of Illinois in that federal case enjoins the law for the whole state. So you see what I'm saying? So even if 
the two Pritzker donated judges rule in favor of the assault of men and say it should be upheld, it may not matter at all if the federal judge in the Southern District of Illinois enjoins the law anyway. Do you see what I mean? It's like uh, we can lose in the state court, but we still win overall because of what the federal judge says. Now, where I think this is all going to wind up, I think that we may be looking in 12 to 18 months, maybe a little bit longer, a potential Supreme Court case involving that Barnett versus Rao case and the related cases that are there uh, being decided by uh, Stephen McGlynn and maybe even a combination of the Barnett and the Bevis case together. I could see that all getting consolidated and being heard together. The reason why that's kind of an interesting thing for the purpose of the Supreme Court is that the Barnett case is a challenge to the Illinois state assault weapon ban and the Bevis versus City of Naperville case is a challenge to a municipality or a city ban. So you could see the Supreme Court decide to take out both. Certainly they don't have to do both. They could just do one and apply it to the other one. Um, but again, I could see a situation where you could have multiple cases going to the US Supreme Court out of the Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals. In fact, you could even see a situation where you have the Bevis case, the Veramontes case, and the Barnett case all before the US Supreme Court in you know 18 to 24 months. So. Uh, it's always impossible to know exactly what the Supreme Court's looking at, but I'm sure they are looking for an assault weapon case to take at some point in the near future. They just need to have the right one. The problem with the Bevis case, again, is that it's up. it would be up on an interlocutory appeal, which, again, they don't like those. But on the other hand, I think the semi-automatic firearm ban is such a relatively simple constitutional case. Remember, Justice Brett Kavanaugh, when he was on the D.C. Court of Appeals as a judge, already ruled that banning semi-automatic firearms, specifically semi-automatic long guns, semi-automatic rifles, is clearly unconstitutional under Heller, which remains the law of the land today, because notwithstanding what the anti-gunners are trying to do to try to argue that Bruin got rid of Heller, when it comes to you know gun ban, that's clearly not accurate at all for the reasons we've talked about in other videos. Heller in common use test, which means that if a particular type of arm is in common use by Americans for lawful purposes with a threshold of 200,000, which we saw in the 200,000 stun guns owned by Americans in the Catano case in 2016, then they're protected. So the bottom line is, I think getting a semi-automatic firearm ban case at the Supreme Court is very important because, again, I think that's a very easy case for this court to handle. I think we will clearly win. I think by my count, we have at least we, we have six strong votes uh, in our favor. So it's just a matter of getting a case to the court before we can prevail. And I think the, these four Illinois types of cases that I just described, three of them, I think, have a real chance to go to the U.S. Supreme Court. I think the Calkins versus Pritzker case dealing with the Illinois state constitution is unlikely to go to the Supreme Court because it's dealing with the state constitution, not any federal claims. At the end of the day, though, I'm not sure those state cases are necessarily going to matter if the federal courts protect Illinois gun owners and their Second Amendment rights, then it won't matter so much what the state courts do, whether or not that recusal was constitutional or not under various case law involving the due process, which we don't need to get into. But I think, really, if you're an Illinois gun owner, you should be cheering for the Second Amendment plaintiffs in these federal cases uh, and hope for the best uh, with the roll of the dice in the state courts. But really, I'm guessing going forward, the ultimate hope for the ultimate victory involving the assault weapon bans for the Second Amendment in Illinois will be in the federal system, either the Bevis case, the Veramontes case, or the Barnett case. Uh, but I feel at the end of the day that Illinois assault weapon ban is going to get knocked out and knocked out relatively soon, but only time will tell. We will see. Okay, folks, I hope you learned something here at the Four Boxes Diner. If you haven't subscribed, please do so, and we'll see you again soon at the Four Boxes Diner. Order's up. Table 2A.